is used in reference to this particular element because most people of native African descent approaches this color. The term does not imply that every Negro is colored. And the word white does not mean that every white man is actually white. Negroes may be colored, but many Caucasians are scientifically classified as colored. We are not all Africans, moreover, because many of us were not born in Africa. And we are not all Afro-Americans because few of us are native to Africa transplanted to America. Mm. Uh oh, hold up now. That's the, hold up. That's the, he, he just dropped it on you. Yeah, he did in, that, in that last sentence. Now this is coming from the mission education of a Negro. So how did Carter G. Woodson know this information back in the 1920s? He definitely do something. Right. He stated that we are not all Afro-Americans because few of us are natives of Africa, transplanted to America. What does that mean? You're talking about Pangea. Pangea. Right. He's saying basically that some of us, most of us actually was already here because he said few of us are natives of Africa. Few of us. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. he knew this back in the 1920s. What happened within the last 100 years that we don't forget who we were? Well, let's continue on and let's see. In all reality, what is a Negro? A Negro is a four-legged animal, a name given to a river in Africa because it contained black water. This is from the Adapt Chamber lesson that I wrote for the Moorish, science, for the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. The question and answer is in reference to the book, The Negro, A Beast, or In the Image of God, by Charles Carroll, 1900. And its response is that the Negro, his origin, history, and destiny, containing a reply to the Negro Beast, by Henry Park Eastman. Charles Carroll wrote that the Negro is non-human, but an eight species, and thus not made in the image of God. According to said proper English grammar, Negro is Negro, a mere adjective. The fact that the word Negro is not a proper noun, a person, place, or thing is the dilemma. It denotes right. description only. In Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution, it classifies as a three-fifth person, which is subhuman, a monster, a beast, chattel property, or cattle, and etc. This is Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Look at the word Negro. It says the word Negro means a black man, one descended from the African race, and does not commonly include a mulatto. Felix versus State 18, Alabama 720. But the laws of the different states are not uniform in this respect. Some included in the description of Negro is one with one eighth and more of African blood. Term Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is Negro. Rice versus um, Kung Loon. Now, this is exactly what Carter G. Wilson just wrote in the Miseducation of a Negro. All right? So. What is meant by the word black? Black, according to science, means death. This is um, 88 of the, um, the 101s and the 102 lessons, right? 101 lesson, 88 is of the 101 lessons of the more Science Temple of America. The objecting, this is what I wrote in the ADAPT Chamber lesson. Black, according to science, that treats positive law means civil is more tooth. Civil is mortuus, according to Black's Law Dictionary, means civilly dead, dead in the eyes or the view of the law. The condition of one who has lost his civil rights and capacity and is accounted dead in law. This is mean, um, um, thus it means one who is considered as if he or she were naturally dead so far as his or her rights are concerned. So when we say that black means um, death in science or in, you know, we're talking about a positive law. Which is means civilis mortuus. And you go to the early 1900s, the definition for black um, did include the word death. Look at it. It says death, darkness, confusion, 
devoid of light, completely dark, with no light, dis dismal, destitute of light, gloomy, angry, um, darkness, threatened, malignant, soiled, stained, murky, mean, wicked, immortal, forbidden, indicating disgrace, depression, sadness, thus black according to science was death and is found in the online free dictionary um, thesaurus. Written medically, scientifically about the black death that the um, epidemic for the bubonic plague experienced during the Middle Ages, 14th century, when it killed nearly half the people of Western Europe, which is 25 million. Black death refers to colored one's skin turned while dying from the black from the bubonic plague, which is called the Black Pest Plague. Which got nothing right. to do with us. <laughs> no, is that as you're going to see? All right, Webster's Dictionary, black adjective. So it's the adjective once again. So Negro is an adjective, black is an adjective. Of uh, the color black, very dark, having dark skin, hair, eyes, swarthy, often capitalized or relating to various people having dark skin, especially those of African origin and ancestry, black people. A, one, evil, wicked. A black deed, very sad and gloomy. The outlook was black, sullen, a hostile. What's the Merriam Dictionary? Black adjective, lacking hue or brightness. Um, absorbing light without reflecting any of the rays composing it. Categorized by absorbing of light, an absent of light. Now, how can you absorb light and then be absent of light at the same time? How is that possible? But yet, this is the definition of black. So you can absorb light, but then be absent of light at the same time? How is that? Enveloped in the darkness, a black night, something initiate capital letter, pertaining or belonging to any of the um, various population characterized by dark skin pigmentation. Um, specifically, the dark skinned people of Africa, Ostia, and Australia, African American, saw you were stained with dirt. The shirt was black within an hour, gloomy. I'm pessimist, pessimistic, um, dismal, a black outlook. So right here, they just showed you that the word black, what's the dictionary, is an oxymoron because one is that it can absorb light and then the other is absent of light. <laughs> Look what the online etymology dictionary says. Now, remember, everything I just told you was its cognitive meaning. Now let's look at its denotive meaning, which means the original meaning of the word black. Black from E, block, dark from P, G, M, C, black, meaning burnt. O, N, which is blocker, blocker, dark, O, H, G. Now, all of this is talking about G is German, all oh, that is Germany. All right, G is Germany, E is English, um, O, M, G, um, O, H, G is. Um, Old um, High Germany, you know what I'm saying? But block, block, Sweden, block, um, Dutch, block, to burn, from P I E, which is um, English, um, black, to burn, gleam, shine, flash. All right, from Greek, um, plagiarism, to burn, scorch. By flagrantly to black, to glow, to burn. For the root, black, to shine, flash, burn, see, bleach. Huh? That's why it's called reverse psychology. Look, look at it. It says the same root produced old English lock, which meant burnt, shining, glittering, pale. Huh? Pale. Mm. <laughs> Pale. No. Yep. The connecting notion being perhaps fire burnt or bright, fire bright and burnt dark. The usual old English word for black was swift or swarth, hence the term swarthy. According to old English, all right, in Middle English, it is often doubted, doubtful whether block, black, or black, or black meant black or dark or pale. Colorless. Huh? Hell, they didn't even know what the hell it meant in the doing the Middle English. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
didn't even know what they was talking about. He didn't even know what it meant. Right. It says right, it says right here <laughs> on the online etymological dictionary, etymology dictionary, that they, it was doubtful whether if they knew the meaning of block. They didn't know if it meant black and dark or if it was pale and colorless. Who's responsible for that, though, brother? Like, who's responsible for the, that old-time, um, like, dictionaries, this old-time, oldest language? Like, weren't we there? Like, weren't we the ones, you know, also around when those words had first? Right. Like, weren't we right. but, the ones right. who... Well, we wasn't called that. We was called Moors during the 1500s. Exactly. Ancient right. So, right. So we, so we know that this word was not applied to us. It became applied to us somehow, and this is what it says. Use of dark skinned people in old English meaning fierce, terrible, wicked. And that was the late 14th century, which is the 1500s. And you know why they said that? Because we was the black knights. This would have turned more, you know, in reference to the black knights. We was the ones who was giving them hell. It says the color of oh. sin and sorrow since at least 13th century. Sense of with dark purpose, malignant emerges 1580. Black magic, black belt from 1875, reference to the um, districts of the United States South with heavily African population. 1870 was reference to the uh, fertile soil. The meaning of black person, um, see, see where it comes in at. It says right here, the meaning black person, African, is from 1620s. After the fall, right? Yeah, yeah 1620s. Who, 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 now remember, they, they told you that they just brought the Africans over here in, 19, in 1619. And they just classified all of us together, you know, as Africans in order to steal our land to make us think that we just came from Africa 400 years ago. But look here, it says the meaning black person, African, is from 1620s. So we never used that before what? 400 years before. ago. Yeah. So that's right. the time the Europeans stamped on us. Right. European creation. Right. It's like, like, he, like Go ahead, brother. Yeah, you know, like the word human. Uh, right. The system was trying to tell me about way which mean colors. You know, I wonder who, who started that? Who said human mean color or way mean colors? Yeah, that's what I heard too. Like, you, yeah, like you mean color. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You mean soil. Soil? Right, soil. You mean oh, soil. Oh, okay. You don't mean colored. Okay. So, so, right. so, so it's like earth, the, earth man. The, the, yeah. Right, the different soil you or the colors of the earth is hue. It became applied to the colors in the rain in the um in the in the crayon box. The different hues is because of the various colors that was used, which was the seven spectrums of light or the set or the seven colors, which is Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, violet, blue, you know, uh, rainbow. Uh, right. The rainbow colors. You know, and that's how mm. it came. But that was once again the cognitive meaning, which means the later meaning. That was not the denotive meaning. Which means the original meaning. Originally, hue meant soil. All right. Mm. All right. right. Okay. Right. Yeah, but see, also, be... Doctor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doctor Lee. My bad. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, but see, now I don't read in the in the, uh, in the dictionary, Doctor Lee, with the word he you and it spelled and it was spelled H Y O O, and it actually meant animal person, man. It meant he whoa, whoa, whoa. he you man. Right, yep. right, right. Now, hold on. But remember, what did they say that we were made from? The Bible says we were yeah. made from the dust yeah. of the ground. Yes, sir. Oh, that's right. You originally was applied to the soil color because we was made from the ground. Once we was made from the ground and we was animated, then hue became applied to the physical body. Well, okay. But in its original sense, it was just dealing with the color of the soil. I'm going to show you this in a few minutes. Just just keep watching. I got you. So right here it says, perhaps <laughs> the late 13th century, 
Um, the term Blackamoor is from, 15, from the 1540s. Now, what they did was took the term off of Blackamoor and just took the more part off and just left us black in which that they start to apply to us. All right? And I'm going to show you what happened and why that was a mistake. Black is an English word from the Latin word nigger or niger. The etymology of the words negro or nigron or negroid come from Latin. Black in Spanish is negro. Black is a description, not an identity, and definitely not a nationality. Example, black person, where black is the description of person is the identity, but person is not a nationality. Therefore, a black person, a black man or a black woman, etc., is not a nationality and should not be thought as such. And when you look in the Black Store Dictionary for edition, look, it says a black person, black person according in constitutional law must be taken in its generic sense. It's a generic term because black is an adjective as contradiction to what? From, from what? From white. This is rice versus gong loom, once again, Mississippi. So black person is a generic word. It's like right? a slang term that they use right. basically, right? Right. And, and, and so it says according in constitutional law. Well, hold on. What does it mention so-called black people in the constitution? Well, remember, three-fifth person, Article 1, Section 2. So when we say that we're a black person, it takes us automatically to being adjudicated by them and them having control over us and being able to set the stage for a jury and so forth and so on because it goes back to Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution, where it states that three, three-fifth person. Mm. So that means black person is part of the three-fifth person um Definition. Here we go. What does the word colored mean? Colored means anything that has been painted, stained, varnished, or dyed. Right? If you go to the Lost Foundation of Le um, Islam of the North um, America, Lesson uh, Student Enrollment of the 120 degrees of the five percent of the nation, guys, and called the Student Enrollment 1 through 10, it says, What is the colored man? Answer The colored man is the Caucasian white man. Or Y'all uh, drafted devil, the skunk of the planet Earth. Now, remember, we just showed you that Carter G. Wilson referred to that even um, um, what they refer to as um, um, white people, they're, they're colored also. I go back up and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Watch. Here it is. Here it is. Let's go down. Okay. He said, Negro may be colored, but many Caucasians are scientifically classified as colored. Scientifically, right? Now, isn't that what? Called them that. Right. So, isn't that what, um, um, what um, Elijah Muhammad just said within the student enrollment lessons? Who is the yep. colored man? The it is. colored man is the Caucasian white man, or Yaku grafted devil, the skunk of the planet Earth. All right. Now, mm -hmm. look at the word colored by definition of fourth law addiction in the um, Black Law Dictionary, fourth edition. By common usage in America, this term is such phrase as colored persons, the colored race, the colored men, and the like is used to designate Negroes or persons of the African race, including all persons of mixed blood descent from Negro ancestry. So, here we were before 1900s, we was called Native Americans. You don't believe me? I'm gonna show you where we was called Native Americans. You won't watch this, all right? Then, 1900, we became called Negroes. 1930, we became coloreds. Now, who did that color thing? Just like Jesse Jackson did that shit in the 1990s with us being African Americans, James Brown did that shit in the 1960s with us being black. Who did that shit in the 1930s? Uh, Anybody know? Was no, sir. It, uh, uh, was, was it, uh... Uh, WB the boys. Uh, exactly. WB the boys. He did that shit to us. So by 1930, WB the boys said that we was colored. Why? Cause he was a mulatto. He was he was um had a white father and a black mother. So he was trying to fit in and find something in which that could fit him into the scenario. So the word <laughs> colored became it dominated for 30 years. 
by common usage in America, this term is in such phrases, color persons, the color race, the color men, and the like is used to designate Negroes and people of African race, including all persons of mixed heritage descended from the Negro ancestry. Now come down. All right, because that's um, Collin versus Oklahoma State Hospital. But where a state constitution provides for separate schools for the white and colored races, the term white race was held to be limited to the Caucasian race and the term colored races to embrace all other races. So that includes Native Americans, or who they call Indians, so-called Negroes, Africans, um, even Indians from out of East India, all of them was white. Colored races to embrace all other races. It has been also been held that there is no, look at this, no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person, which the courts are bound judicially to know. So you walk in there with them Negroes from um, the uh, uh, National Advanced Association of Colored People. And watch the NAACP. Right. <laughs> yeah. the, court, the court just said in Pasca versus Dallas that it has also been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person. Which the, which the courts are bound judicially to know. So you come up here with that colored shit. I don't know what you're talking about. Put his ass in jail. I don't know what he's talking about. Put his ass in jail. Yeah. Crazy. Probably. Right. He's colored, so he's going to be seeing them colored bars for, for a little while. Ain't he? We got wow. some gray ones. We got some red. We got some black ones. We got some. We got you know. We got some white ones. We got some different color bars for you to be watching, nigga. Wow. <laughs> oh. So the so I told you that black is a generic term. Color is no te- is no phrase that they know in the in the damn courtroom. And Negro is a damn word on which that what. I mean, it means we dead. Yeah, I mean, it means we not people. Dead. That, right, that we dead in the eyes of the law. Black means that we dead in our So here we have all three words in the court. Of court now, all three words, according to Black Law Dictionary, tells you that it's something in which that is generic and that the courts don't know. So we don't go up in there as Negro, Black, and Colored? And how they get personum over that is because on our birth certificates, we have Black. That's the original bond or contract. That's where they predicate in the whole damn case on. So that's why you have to raise jurisdiction. Is that, um, hold up, I'm not a Negro, God damn it. <laughs> oh, no, I ain't black either now. Mm-hmm. Don't assume that shit. Don't assume that now. I'm going to do Obama on, I'm gonna have to do Obama on you on that one. Mm-hmm. So, so let me ask you a question, man, because I heard a brother, he said that, that Europeans, they were Moors too, man. How do you feel about that? No, no, no. They were, they, they were 20 Moors. Right? 20. Right, but only reason why they was twenty more is because we we mixed in. They mixed in with us. Oh, okay, already. Right, right. So this is more so um, the children of um, Hannibal, um, the Sicilians, um, the Portuguese, the Spaniards. You know. Oh, right. Um, right. Where the Moors was there in Spain for over for um for nearly eight hundred years or more. You know. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's who they're talking about. Yeah, we can say the same thing about Sicilians, right? Right. Exactly. Okay. Right. Exactly. The the direct direct okay. children, right? So like Connie right, Moore. Right, right, right. There was our children through the union of um the black males and the white you know, white women. You know? All right, so so um is okay, so is it is a European would you consider a European your brother, Dr. Ali? I'm going to say it like this, bro. All right. <laughs> Dr. Richard King wrote the book, African Origin of Biological Psychiatry. He stated that Africans 5 to 15% had calcified pineal glands. He said 20 to 35% Asians have calcified pineal glands. He said 60 to 80% Europeans have calcified pineal glands. Dangerous that means that means about 20 to 40 in which that we can get along with. And more than likely, those are the ones who are mostly mixed in with us in some shape, form, or fashion, and they're actually just passing or, you know, in their bloodline, they have a lot of us there, such as, like, um, okay. like we just finished talking about, the Sicilians. You go to Sicily and watch, you see that, that some of them are just, just as dark as you. Or go to Greece, you'll see some of them just as dark as you. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, remember, yeah. Greece is only 15, um, actually less than 15 miles away from Africa. So actually, oh. uh, uh, you can swim, you know what I'm saying, if you was in good condition. You know what I'm saying? Swim so Greece, right? um, we have to understand that what they refer to as European countries nowadays were not European countries to begin with. Mm. Oh, you know, oh, if, you go, okay. if you go to if you go to the book Sex and Race by J. E. Rogers, what they never told you in history class class by Indo Kemet Kush, mm -hmm. you will see that they speak about that the first um um England um um settlers were so called black. The first Spaniards was black, the first Portuguese was black, the first Greeks Grecians was black, the first Romans was black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's always been black people, so called black people in these areas for hundreds and thousands of years before the European even came out to Caucasus Mountain. Hmm. Okay, so they so they got our blood in us, but I mean they got the only reason why they are upright and walking is because they got our blood in us, but that doesn't necessarily make him my brother. Well, it don't make us the brothers in a sense. It does because, in a sense, I mean, because if we were that separated, we wouldn't be able to genetically um, um, breed with them. We wouldn't be able to um, produce children with them. Okay, right, right. 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 So, so, so they, everyone on the planet Earth originally came from out of Africa. They just came out of Africa later over the last 6,000 years because they went through a drafting process. We, we actually formed them in a science laboratory. Yeah. Oh, okay. We, they're not really our brothers. They're our children. They're our children. Already. 60 to 80% of them have calcified pineal but that still leaves 20 to 40% of them that don't. That, that means that they can reach some type of spiritual enlightenment. How and why? is because of the fact that they have more of us in them than the rest of those 60 to 80%. Already. Right. Right. Yeah. So, that, so that's, that's like your Italians did, man. Right. Exactly. That's the Sicilians. That's what we're talking about. The southern um, Italians or Sicily. The Sicilians. Yeah, because uh, Sicily was one time, one time called Moorish Sicily at one time. There you go. Wow. Right. Is that true? That's crazy. That's All right. So, um, no, they, they, not necessarily our brothers and sisters, they are children because they're the last race in order to form from us, you know, or the latest, I should say, the, within the last the, six to 10,000 years. The most the current, first. the most, yeah. Right. All right. So now we have Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey stated, um, Thomas Jefferson might be, um, might not be worthless. When the measure of his tears shall be filled full, when their groan shall have involved heaven itself in the darkness, doubtless of God of justice will awaken to their distress and be diffused in light and liberty in um, liberal liberty. Um, among the oppressors for a length by his exterminating thunder manifests his attention to the things of this world and they are not left to the guidance of a blind fatality or fatality because the Negro is not happy and will never be until he is restored to his own nationality mm. so why would Marcus Garvey say we're not going to be happy until we restore it into our own nationality. And obviously, Negro is not a nationality. Because he said, because the Negro is not happy and will never be until he is restored to his own nationality. So, Negro is not a nationality. All right. And my ability yeah. to continue my work in this behalf will bless the nation. For as Thomas Paine said, no man can be happy surrounded by those who happiness he has destroyed. Right? So, Dr. John Henry Clark, he said this, he stated, we are a people searching for a nationality. So that means from the time of Marcus Garvey, 1914, until he left the scene in 19, um, to 1928, for that 14 Come years, back. and then John Henry Clark said this. Now, John Henry Clark just passed in around 1998. 
All right? So from 1928 to 1998, for 70 years, Negro, blacks, and colored still did not have a nationality. So that means that Negro, black, and colored are not nationality. And John Henry Clark states this, we as a people search, searching for a nationality. A name of a people must relate them instantaneously to land, history, and culture. And when you think instantaneously to land, you think of nationality. So let's look at the definition of land. According to the Blasco Dictionary for Deluxe Edition, land in the most general sense comprehends any ground, soil, or earth whatsoever. A field, meadows, postures, woods, moors, mm. water, mm. Ranches, forests, and heat. The word more is embedded inside the definition of land. You cannot get more in the words of Dr. Um, John Henry Clark instantaneously than that. Right? So land is the foundation of nationality. And the name more symbolizes the birthright ties, which is called just, I'll say recently, and, and um, heritage just solely. In international law, Negroes, black, and colors in the said United States corporation are listed as stateless i.e. landless or or are we according to law a land cannot be sold mm. Mm. right so, so it means we cannot be sold right the land cannot be sold so let's look at let's look at um let's look at the general the chairman of the new black panther party former international spokesman for the Nation of Islam. Right? Dr. Khaled Muhammad, he said, Africa is not our home. Africa is our throne. We ruled our throne 190, uh, 196, 940,000 square miles of planet Earth. That's right. Yeah. Okay? So, let's look at what Smokey Robinson said, he did Death Jam Poet, third season, May 16, 2003. Thirteen years ago, he did this, and it's called A Black American. He said, I love being a black American. But as a black man in this country, I think it's a shame that even from that every few years, we get a change in name. Since those first ships arrived here from Africa, they came across the sea, there was already black men in the country who were free. Mm. As for those that came over here on those terrible boats, they was called niggas and slaves and told what to do and how to behave. And if you go to Africa in search of your race, you'll find out quick that you're not an African American. You're just a black American in Africa taking up space. Mm. Why do you try, why are you trying to attach yourself to a continent? Yeah. Right? So this is part of his poem that he dropped on the Deaf Poet, third season, May 16, 2003. So we already went over black, all right, and it still has no nationality. However, I wanted to show you that he was coming close because of the fact that he says right here something that, um, you will find that other Negroes have not yet told us that he said that there were already black men in this country who was free. All right. This was before the ships from Africa. He said, he said, since those first ships arrived from here from Africa that came across the sea, there was already black men in this country who was free. All right. So he's just using the word black. But who were they? They were the Omex, the descendants of the Omex. And I'll get into that as we'll see. This is Jesse Jackson who popularized the term African-American in, the, in, the, in um, 1988, 89, going into 90, just as we was called colored, but we're not that. And then Negro, but not that. To be called black is just as baseless. Now, he just told you everything we just said. 
Notice that. But now he tells you, black tells you about your skin color and what side of town you live on. All right? In other words, but black doesn't tell you who you are. This is the same thing that I just showed you that, that, um, that John Henry Clark's um, stated. So Jesse Jackson was saying this. But then he goes on to put you under a new classification. African American evokes discussions of the world. Huh. Every ethnic group yeah. in this country has a reference to some land base, some historical cultural base. <coughs> All right. Now he's not he's not wrong. But however, is it African American or should it be American African? Wow. Uh. Oh, I'm just leaving it right there. Let's continue on because we're going to figure this out. The term African American has only existed since 1988. You've only been an African for the last 25 years. Prior to that, you were known as American Negroes. Thanks to Jesse Jackson for Afro, um, Africanizing you off your own land. Mm -hmm. All right? Think about what we just, think about what that's just Say now, All right? This is Roy Wilkins. He agreed with Jesse Jackson, and he's making statements in January the thirty first, nineteen eighty nine. Wherever I go to Africa, I feel like a person with a legitimate place to stand on this planet. This is the name for all the feelings I've had all these years. He's talking about in terms of African American. Now, what's the mistake Jesse Jackson made by popularizing the term African American? Well, Africa is a continent made up of fifty four countries. The slaves to North America came from the Midwest coast of Africa, Nigeria, and is the true country of approximately 90% of the so-called 500,000 um, North American slaves, which is only 10% of what Brazil and um, South America received in slaves. All right, Brazil does not commonly use the term African Brazilian. Brazil used colors, i.e. petrol. Um, Branca, Blanco, um, Amaduelo. Right. These color languages is taboo in the United States. With the DNA used today, almost all of our current African American friends could call themselves Nigerian Africans and be much closer to their true heritage. Mm -hmm. If one would include Cameroon, that would be a 95% chance of being correct. When do you have anyone? What? Um, when do you have anyone say I am Euro American? Never. Europe is a continent. It is made up of over 50 countries as well. German, German, um, American, Irish American, English American, yeah. Italian American, Spanish American. In my opinion, that would be more pride taken, um, taken by African Americans if they were, um, were properly associated from um, the two country, not continent. All right, so, all right, now we so know I'm, even out of the 90, even then, we're talking about, even though they claim that 90% 90, 90 to 95% came from out of Nigeria and Cameroon from those areas of, of South of, um, of um, Africa, that still was only 15% of the native, of the population that came here out of 85% of the population that was already here. So the vast majority of our genetics was already here 85 million years ago. Um, 80 by 80%. Hundreds and thousands of millions of years ago. So that means that the 15% that did come from um, Cameroon or Cameroon or Nigeria um, from those particular areas, you know, mixed in with the 85% that was already here. So really the only thing they did was make our genes stronger. But 85% of us was already here, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So here, use of African American dates too. Now this is what they have found. They, the New York Times went so far as to find out, well, the use of the African American name, that particular name, that phrase, dates to nation's earliest days. This is by Jennifer um, Sussler. Um, Sussler. Now, this is April the 20th. All right, allegedly found by the Yale's Law School Associated Press, um, um, Associated Professor Grace um, Sapiro. This is from the two summons written by 
the African American. Right? There's supposedly 17 um, in the late 1700s. So what they're trying to say is that the term African American was used all the way back in the 1700s. Right? It says the two no. sermons written by African American, one on the capture of Lord Call, um, Cornwallis to be sold for or by uh, Woodhurst A. Smith and S. Saviel. Right? Saviel. Now, now, that's, now that was at Yale Law School now. Now this one is from Harvard. Uh, from um, the Hawkins Library and Harvard College you know, um, um, Library and University. Now it goes from the African American to by an African American. Written in 1782. From out of Philadelphia. Mm. Okay? Once again, on the capture of Lord, of, um, Lord Cornwallis. So now it went from the African in America to in African American. So, are we to believe that a man of color that wasn't legally able to read or write had money to post an ad for a lost cow and pay a um, a reward during the 1700s? Was he free or educated, or did a Caucasian man write it in his behalf? Also, why would he refer to himself as the African American from Yale University? Then in African American in the work for Harvard. Also, why the African American as he, the only one in the area that um, that was what he was known as? Why would he refer to himself as being from a continent instead of his home country, or better yet, his tribe? Mm -hmm. So see, you see how they're trying to rewrite history. Yeah. Lastly, yeah. how is our anonymous pamphlet proof of origin? when the term has not yet been found in academia circles. This sounds suspicious to me. Every other pamphlet I've come across during that era refers to people of color as Negroes. Right. All right? So we know something is going on, but I just have to throw that in there because we have to bust a hole through their bullshit. Right. right. We're going to so do it too. Yeah. When you, your people who are not already, this, this is what it says, your people, this is what they want us to, um, to think. Your people is not already here. You were born here from Africa. And you're not an American. You are an African American. Your history began when you became slaves. <laughs> this is what they tell us. This is what they told me. So here it is. We got these niggas believing they're African. All right, now we control the land and the whole livelihood. Right. Changing your identity was the best thing we've ever done. They actually let us educate their children. Charles Durham was a genius, dumbass niggas. They think Negroes only exist in one continent, all because of a drawing up cartoon diagram of a slave ship. But there's no archaeological evidence of one ship ever existed. They haven't shown it to us. Not saying that it don't exist, they just haven't shown it to us. And why would not they why wouldn't they show it to us? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. When they show us all these movies and nonsense. Bingo. Right. They show us Amistad. They show us Roots. They show us coming over on the boats on them. But uh, where the boat at? I mean, damn, if you um, had Roots coming out, wouldn't it make sense for you to have a damn ship to go along with it? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It must not have went that way. Because, exactly. brother, didn't you say that some of us went to, like, they took some of the Moors from North America, took yeah. some of us to, like, London and Europe yep. and stuff, too? Yeah, took us to and Africa took, too. Yeah, and took some of us from from uh, from 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 the north down into the south, and some of us from the islands um, um, into the south. And so it was a different terrain, you know. what I'm saying different territory. So yeah, was we just, was damn enslaved in that sense because now think about trying to put a slave in slavery in their in their own area. They they know how to get the hell out and go. <laughs> All right, so here's yeah. black. African American, you can have a blue shoe, but if you say I have a blue, then they just sound illogical. <laughs> if someone told you their nationality, race, ethnicity was blue, you'd think that they're crazy. Black is an adjective, not a noun. So how can a person be a color? Now, exactly. a person, place, a thing. We are a person, 
but we are people, so a noun should define us. You learned as a child that black is a color or does not come in diverse shades. Light, black, or dark black sounds ridiculous. And so does calling someone light-skinned, dark-skinned black. You can be a light-skinned more, dark-skinned more, or a dark-skinned Ethiopian, light-skinned Kenyan, or a dark-skinned Somalian, but you can't be black. Africa is a continent. It is not a nation. It is made of nations. It is not a country. Right? Yeah. So therefore, you cannot be African American. So nope. this strikes down, you know, the nonsense of Jesse Jackson based on what we just said. So one of the biggest lies that the United States has told and taught and convinced the so called African Americans, right, if you want to use that term, and the rest of the world with it is that this is how you get to North America on slave ships by the millions and you were never on you was never on American soil until Europeans brought you over here. So they showed you here that we was packed like sardines. You know. Sure. Now, message. If you're still saying and thinking in the twenty first century that this is how all black people got to America, you actually have not done any real research. No. Nope. People, you're not helping your, um, you're actually are failing them. So please step your knowledge up. So here we have the drawing. All right, and this is all we have. This is this damn drawing? This is it, and that's proof. Look, I say you call yourself Goldstein. Silverstein, Rubenstein, because you stole all the gold and silver and rubies all, <laughs> all, on, all over the earth. And it's true because you're thieving and stealing and roguing and lying all over the face of the planet earth. And this is Dr. Khaled Muhammad. It's from a speech in Baltimore, in, um, Baltimore on February the 19th, 1994. It was right around the time when I met him. I'm quoting the um, New York Times Magazine. Okay, 8, 1994. So who's he talking about? He's talking about the Jews because the Jews controlled, um, um, had control over the American slavery. All right? And we're talking about slavery now, not to get confused with the slave trade. All right? They want to call it, look, name of slave ships, they call it Abigail. Crown, Nassau, Four Sisters, Anne and Eliza, Prudent, Betty, Hester, Elizabeth, Antigua, Betsy, Holy, White Horse, Expedition, Charlotte, and Cocoa, and Cocoa. So here, who, who, who's these Jews? You have Aaron Lopez, Moses um, Levi, Jacob Franks. Isaac Levi, Nathan um, um, Simpson, um, Moses Levi again, Moses Levi, Justin Barch and James Ingram, Henry Gordon and Jacob Phoenix, Mordecai and David Gomez, Mordecai and David Gomez, Nathan Morston and um, Abram Leo, we has um, D. Wolf. James D. Wolf or William D. Wolf, James D. Wolf, J. D. Sweetie, um, John and J. Um, um, Roosevelt, Moses and Sam Levi, Jacob Frank, Moses and Sam Levi. So notice that the majority of it is by Moses Levi. And these were Jews. This is documented illustration of the history of the slave trade to America. All right, this is um, Washington, D.C., 1930-1935, Cogney Institute of Technology, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right, this is by Elizabeth Downing, four, four volumes. All right, so. Yeah. Well, let's look at this. Negro Sustel by John Thomas Manfred. The number two, Tri-Fleet, Trade Fleet, 
the cargo of the ship Venus, Captain Bunnicombe, conflicted of two of two hundred and eighty prime slaves. All right, mostly about men from the Gold Coast. The cell will be open in a few days upon very generous terms. All right, so once again, they did not refer to us as African Americans. It was Negroes. And as you see, um, this is them talking about the trade ships. However, the only problem is, is that, once again, there was 150 years, allegedly, that we could not read. All right? So they was changing history, reconstructing history during that time period. Mm hmm Right, so a lot of this shit that they could have made up because it's not making any sense. They so made it mean? up. Right, that's right. Jesus was the name of the slave ship captained by Sir John Hawkins in 1564 by appointment of Queen of England. But once again, the only thing we keep seeing is that same damn slave ship drawing. Now we know where it comes from. There it is. The slave ship it's all was called Jesus. Okay. Right, the slave ship was called Jesus. The first slave ship was called Jesus that brought us here supposedly is in um fifteen fifty five. Right? Well I heard, yeah. Right. <laughs> but then of course unofficially that was unofficially though by Steve, by um by Sir John Hawkins. Officially we was bought by by here by sixteen nineteen twenty slaves. Or Negroes, as they refer to us as. Once again, they did not say Africans. They said Negroes. All right? So what we figured is that they was going up and down. They was not crossing a, thir a three or four month journey across the ocean. They was going up and down the East Coast. Yeah. Okay? They was going up, up. Right. They was going up and down the East Coast. So here we see... That this shit drawing that they just happen to have happens to match the same damn symbol that's on the Bible, being that the first ship was the slave ship called Jesus. You don't think that is coincidence? <laughs> they had high hopes for, for that name, you know. If it could even happen, though. You know? Right. So propaganda, the average so-called black person wasn't taught about the Olmec civilization. As we know, it was here 5,000 years before the Europeans. <laughs> and it was, not, they was they was Egyptian Nubians. This is what, this is what um, was told to us by the Mayans. The Mayans said that the Olmecs are the mothers and fathers of Western civilization. Said and that. that it was Egyptian Nubians. That's right. right. And they came here over 5,000 years ago, 3,000 years before Jesus. Allegorically, that is. Yeah. All right. So, look at the term African. Old English, Afrikaans. The Latin, Afrikaans. Adjectives. Plural. From Africa. Use of, right here, use of white residents of Africa from 1815. Use of black residents of the United States from late 18th century. Huh? Hold up. <laughs> is an African is adjective? African. Is it an adjective? After the 18th century, right? Yeah, Latin Africanus is an adjective. Hmm. That's recent. African is a noun. Old English Africanus, plural. <clears throat> from Latin Africanus, adjective. From Africa, see Africa. Use of white residents of Africa from 1815. So this is how the European who went into South Africa became known as Africans. It was a term used by 1815, but then it became used by so-called black residents of the United States from 18th century, when it 
essentially meant one bought from Africa. And sometimes we'll contrast to native... Uh-oh. Man, I just told you. And sometimes was contrast by native-born Negro. Huh? 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 <coughs> they use the term Negro, but you know they're talking about Moors. Exactly. Hold up, hold up. Once again, I, I don't know if we caught that. You be catching that? We caught that. We caught that? <laughs> Look, it says, as an adjective by 1560s, pertaining to African, Africa and Africans. Old English, Africanized, from 1789, as it pertaining to black Americans. So that word Africa don't even, don't even mean us. <laughs> nope. Once again. People don't be calling themselves that down there. Black don't mean us. African don't mean us, per se. No. Right. And then, it, it, it says, then, then it's crazy shit is that it says, it, it was meant for one born from Africa, and sometimes was contrast to native-born Negroes. American. Right. Thanks to us. Right. The Aboriginal indigenous Americans. Exactly. That's right. us. And they just told us that. That's us. Mm. Yep, like the Aborigines of Australia, we are yep. the Aborigines of America. Exactly. So, stop Afrocentralizing, Afrocentralizing indigenous people. Stop colonializing indigenous people with the white supremacy continental yeah. agenda. Stop stripping indigenous people of their land, identity, and birthrights by imposing Africa on them. Stop bullying indigenous people into accepting a mm. continent that they have no connection to at least not within the last 400 years, and let them naturally be their own aboriginal selves in peace. Exactly. You know? All right, so, who are the real Indians? The so-called Indians of the Americas or the Indians from India? Well, India, as a propaganda by European conquerors of the Western Hemisphere, is a myth. America is not India, and the aborigines are not Indians. However, Europeans have called the Moors of the Western Hemisphere Indians because they being influenced by Christopher Colombo, um, but they had first arrived at um, Hustan, uh, Hindustan, which is India, Asia, just below China. The Aboriginal North um, natural people of their culture was falsely designated as Indian, although the Europeans knew that they was not Indian. Sometimes the Europeans would designate the Moors as West Indian. And that's where it came from. Yeah. Because the, the, the Moors or the West Indians looked just like the East Indians. It was very dark complected and some had straight hair, some had woolly curly hair. As I'll show you. So that's yeah, how they became fat. Indians. Right, because remember, Christopher Columbus never came to the mainland. The first no. he came was Cuba. Oh, what? Yeah, he, oh, never, he never came foot on the mainland. So he came to the very wow. islands. Right, he came to the islands. You know what I'm saying? But he never came. He, um, um, he, matter of fact, when he came to Cuba, which he referred to as Isabella after Queen Isabella, uh, of King Fernandez and Isabella, um, when you know who took over the Moors in 1492, um, he called the land. He called. Um, he said that in his diary that there was a black emperor who met him at the shore who spoke Arabic, Hebrew, and Chaldean. It's actually amazing, you know. Great. Now that's now that's a Moor. Yeah. There was no Indian. That was a Moor. Mm-hmm. So Caucasians openly admit that you, that you, that you, the so-called black race, was the first or um, origin race on this planet. Caucasians have openly admitted that your so-called race has been on this planet for over three million years. Caucasians openly admit that your race has all dominant g- genes. Your divine ancestors left tons of statues and artifacts, evidence to remind you of who they were and what they created, and who you were, and you're still worshiping some Jesus from two thousand years ago. Time to wake up, folks. Let's go up the lies told to our people during the slavery era. You are free now. All right, mm-hmm. so 
The reason for that is because Louis Farrakhan, who were told by the heads of Indian Affairs that the people inside your mosque in America are really Native Americans. Oh shit, what? Louis Farrakhan was told by the bureau, by the head of the Bureau of Indian Affairs that the people inside your mosque in America are really the Native Americans? And he's dropping bombs after bombs, right? Okay, now, now, now how come Farrakhan had to come forth and said this real openly? He made a little mistake when he let it out at this last Million Man march. Yeah, but see, did, didn't uh, Farrakhan say that we, didn't he talk about Noble Drew Ali and said that we were a nation man? Yeah, he talked about Noble Drew Ali, but he also tried to backpedal and said, because you know that by talking about Noble Drew Ali, that people would have came into the more science temple all came into indigenous affairs. So he didn't want that to happen. So he tried to say that we don't need nationality. Oh, man. Damn. Yeah. Because he was, yeah, because he was also sided with Donald Trump talking about we need to put up uh, uh, fences and shit to keep the immigrants out. But that them people, they're not immigrants. they from here, too. Exactly. Exactly. The only immigrant is the European, man. Exactly, yeah. as, as, as we're going to see, because right here, America, the aboriginals are copper colored found here by the Europeans, 1848, 1849, 1854, 1859, editions of Noah Webster's Dictionary. The American Indians, who became reclassified as free people of color and colored mulattoes, were placed under the umbrella of Negro. <laughs> That's what happened. So, continue on. Uh, so, somebody didn't pay attention to school because what is the noun? The noun is a person, place, a thing. What is the adjective? An adjective describes a noun. That is not describes a noun. Describes a noun. Yep. So, the word yep. black exactly. is an adjective that is not a noun. If you are black, you are not a noun. You are an adjective. An adjective is not a person, place, a thing, which means you aren't, you aren't even three-fifths of a man. A man or woman is a noun, not an adjective. What's mm -hmm. that? Somebody? Oh, uh, okay. You? Right. So, now look. Look over here to the side. You see that? Mm -hmm. Anima, ground. If God used this to create man, when Adam and Eve look like this? Right? Yeah. So remember, we just went over the soil. All right? Remember, more means soil or ground. So here, the laws that govern humanity yes. comes from nations, not a box of crayons. So stop identifying people with black and white. This is what Brother Todd said. <laughs> yeah, Todd, yeah, Todd, you killed him. You killed me with that, man. <laughs> right. Now, now, we do have people as which, you know, um, we just finished showing, showing you, and that comes close. All right, remember, he says it. I'll show you. All right, the word Negro or black is used in reference to this particular element because most people of Native African descent approach this color. So that's how black came on. But, I mean, how many people do you see like this nowadays? Or this? So... Black and white is a status. It has nothing to do with race. If it did, Asians would check yellow. Mexicans would check beige or brown on this century, but they don't. No. First, there no, is no nation of black Americans, nor is there a black American in any documented record the world over. Black America, or what is referred to in law as a misnomer, or collectively misnomers. As you well know, dramatically, black is an adjective and is not a proper noun. This is where, this is where we were just challenging um, Smokey Robinson as he was proud, a proud black American. But once again, as you well know, dramatically, black is an adjective and is not a proper noun. Socially and politically, black implies civilist more twos, which means dead in the eyes of the law. So black American is not a nationality, nor is it a nation. Therefore, black has no political interest nor power in the free national constitution that was um, prepared for all free national beings. All right? So Smokey Robinson? Yeah, remember, we just showed you that Smokey Robinson said that he was a proud black American, you know, 
but he made some points that I um, that I went on to read um, later on. I wish that there was some points that he made in that poem that was valid, but him saying Black America was not valid, and that's the reason why. Okay. Black Positionary Fourth Edition, civil is more true, civilly dead, dead in the world view of the law, the condition of one who has lost his civil rights and capacity, and is accounted dead in law. This is Razor versus Razor. Look at African descent. Persons of African nativity of or African descent within the meaning of the um, Naturalization Act as amended by Act July 4, 14, 1870, or members of the Negro races of Africa or their descendants by intermixing with races constituting free white persons. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Check this out now. The Negro races ref uh, referred to being those from which they emancipated slavery in the United States descended. Go to American. Pertaining to the Western Hemisphere or in more restricted sense to the United States, it was assumed that the term American included all classes of citizens, native, and naturalization, irrespective of what they originally came from. Now, this is what happened. This is Blackstone Dictionary. So now, you know, we just read that American meant um, Aboriginal copper colored natives who existed here prior to the invasion of their territory by Europeans. However, now, American, it means all classes of citizens, native and naturalized. Right? Now, we're not citizens, nor are we really natives, and nor have we been naturalized. So, this term American can't be applied to any of them. Because we ourselves, who are the true Americans, are not any of that. All right? So free white persons. Free white persons refer to the naturalization amended by July 14, 1870, by means naturalized, naturally given to it, which was first at um, 103C3, meaning all persons belonging to the European race. Races then commonly counted as white, and their descendants included such descendants in the countries to which they had immigrate, um, immigrated. Right. This includes all, all European Jews, more or less, to mix with people of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, um, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. This includes Magyar, Lads, and Finns, and the Basket, and the Albanians. It includes the mixed Latins, um, Celtic, Iberians, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, the mixed Greeks, Latin, Phoenicians, um, the North American inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slit Slavs and Tornic races, um, Tortar inhabitants of South Russia. It does not mean Caucasian race. All right. It does not mean Aryan race. It does not mean Indo European race. It does not mean mixed Indo European. It does not mean Dravidian. It does not mean Semitic. It does not mean um, Mongolian people who inhabited Persia. It does not mean a, um, a, Seretic, a um, Syrian of Asiatic birth or a descendant who is not being entitled to become the naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person, nor of native of India who belong to the Hindu race. So free woman of color, term up to the time of the Civil War applies to all persons not of white race, including Indians. So a free woman of color was an Indian, as well as also a so-called Negro. Indians, the Aboriginal inhabitants of North America, is what they refer to. So these are just some of the Black Law Dictionary's definitions that we had to go over. In order to be recognized by the government in which that you live, the nation of the earth, you must have a nationality. Black, according to science, means death. Colored means anything that has been painted, stained, or varnished, or died. Negro is a name given to a river in West Africa because it contains black water. African American was created to pacify and fed up people. As long as we use these names to describe us, we will always be considered three fifths of a person, of a human being. So here, once again, you see earth, which is dirt, soil, mud, terra, ground, Gaia, Adama. So if God used this, this is the soil to create man, would Adam and Eve look like this? So, 
this goes back once again, according to Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, land in the most general sense comprehends any ground, soil, or earth, whatever as filled, meadows, pastures, woods, moors, waters, marshes, spirits, and east. All right? Mm -hmm. So, land is foundation of nationality, and the name moors symbolizes the birthright ties or heritage. And in international law, Negroes, blacks, and colors in the state of the United States of America are listed as stateless, i.e., lineless. So, Indigenous land rights or the rights of indigenous people to land either individually or collectively. Land and resources rights are the fundamental importance of indigenous people for a range of reasons, including the religious significance of the land, self-determination, identity, and economic um, factors. Land is a major economic asset. Majority of um, indigenous people living in forest areas depending on the natural resources of the land to fuel for sustenance of needs. Hunting, fishing, gathering of forest products and small um, garden pl plots, still for the basis of the household economics. The security and permanence of their control, use of their natural resources based on actually more important to most indigenous groups than direct ownership of the land itself. The demand for ownership, in fact, derived, derived from the need of um, from ensuring that the access of these resources, so it is particularly important for the examining how the different nation level legit regimes handle the aspects of indigenous ownership. Land is also an important instrument of inheritance and it is a symbol of social status. The land is essential for people spiritual development. The land is sacred and sometimes the gift to the land is a gift from their God. Losing the land means a loss of contact with the earth and a loss of identity. Land is not only an exerted work, financial value, but also a very important part of human life for views and belief system. Indigenous land rights have been addressed with a variety of degrees of success on the national level since colonialization. Such claims may also be based upon the principles of international treat law, treaties, common law, and domestic um, constitutions or legislation. Because indigenous means Indy means dark, pigment, dark matter. Genius means originating name. So the indigenous Aboriginal people globally have been misnomed as being Africans or Afros by the colonial European government. All right? Now we know this. If you read the first page of your documents, it says indigenous people by definition of the United Nations of the international um, draft. Um, um, of Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, it states specifically that Indigenous people are those who have a historical continuity here prior to the invasion of their territory by Europeans, as well as those um, who was brought to the New World and who freed themselves and be and wish to re to be reattached to the culture they mentor. All right, so that's the United Nations definition. So now we look at the first leader of the Negro Amer of the uh, Native American Party. This is Louis Charles Levy, right? Once again, a Jew, just like they did. Um, the Jews um, ran the NAACP, founded the NAACP. They founded the damn, these same Jews founded the goddamn Native American Party. All right, so the term Native American refers to pale European people with a relatively established history in the United States of America as opposed to recent immigrants who held a a naivety point of view. Ironically, it does not refer to actual first humans who settled the land. So hence, we don't really go by the term Native American, um, but we use the term indigenous more so. Because as you see here, this was a European. Louis mm -hmm. Charles Levine, 1845, 1860, um, is around that time, in between that time, all right, when he form that. So here, the Native American Party, a short-lived political party organized about 1843 with the objectives of somewhere similar to that of the American Party. All right? Here, American, an Aboriginal or one of the various copper-colored natives found on the American continent by the Europeans, the Aboriginal application of the name, an American-born descendant of European settlers. See, this is how they got themselves into the, a native-born or neutralized naturalized citizen of the United States. The name American may also exalt it to pride of patriotism. All right. 
you cannot really conceive on insulting it um, uh, on how insulting it is to Native Americans to be told that they were discovered. All right, he's not talking about Native Americans in the sense of what we just stated, but of the original people, because all Europeans are illegally on this continent since 1492. So when um, um, Donald Trump wore the hat, make America white again, um, and that's what he was talking about. All right. Well, number one, he's talking about the United States. He ain't talking about America, because that was the case, and they don't even be here. All right. So right. American part should come before the hyphen. It could be uh, American, um, African American, Mexican American, Asian American, Native American, European. We all American first, and we should be proud of our American heritage. Um, that was just one thing I wish that to say. When we look at here, I and I. Um, um, Cody, um, um, his life as a um, Hollywood Indian. Um, you find out, um, remember, he was called the Crying Indian. They showed this commercial for like 20 years, right, from the 1970s all the way up to the early 1990s. All right, he was always crying. All right, now you find <laughs> out who um, I and I Cody was. He was born in 1904 in Louisiana. And his name was um, Espera um, Akadi Corti. 100% Italian. His parents were both from Italy. Huh. He moved to Hollywood to act in movies, pretending he was a Cherokee. And for That's decades, so won numerous yeah. acting roles for depicting Native Americans. Uh -huh. To maintain the fraud, always wore a, um, um, a braided wig, buck, um, um, a buckskin jacket, and um, mm -hmm. beaded moccasins. Um, became nationally famous as the crying Indian in the early um, um, in the Earth Day ads. 1984, he put out a book based on his fraud, uh, which is just what the cover was. Insisted to his death in 1999 that he was Native American, even after his half sister produced documents in 1996, even he was a total fraud. Yeah. These are, the, these, are these five dollar Indians that we're talking about. Yeah. Just trying to steal your birth right. So you're right, the Negro isn't Native American because Native means born here. So anyone born in America is considered Native American. Instead, the so-called Negro is the original, aboriginal, indigenous people of the Americas um, were the Mayans, the Omecs, the mound builder civilization that gave birth to all so-called Negro tribes like the Choctaw, the Creek, the Seminole, the um, Anazi, the um, Chickasaw, the Cherokee, etc. Martin Luther King stated that Negroes is of two cultures. It's because suddenly the agents sent in by the Europeans who were pan Africanists are now running around saying the Negro is from Africa. After the Negro had already been on this land for over 56,000 years, building temples, castles, pyramids, mounds, um, thousands of mounds, by, by now suddenly we um, should focus on Africa. All right? Now, also, Remember, we are not Negroes either because Negroes was a name applied to the people of the continent of Africa, and Negroes meant black and Latin, as it was just a derogatory word as an insult of Europeans applied to the American Aborigines, as well as, um, as well to fuck with your self-identity of who you really are, um, like the term Afro-American. So here, would you think that this crayon out of the um, box do well, you think they took this crayon out of the box? It was called Indian Red. All right? And you notice, look at Indian Red. You see that um, it's the same color as copper. All right? Because it resembles the Indians of the past. Uh -huh. And we show you that. It's amazing to see all this rare, never seen before artwork, um, ceramics, statues, figurines, as well as paintings, etc., um, maps what help us to connect to our ancestors and heritage. Uh, and here we find Kramer. All right? Kramer is pointing at the um, statue, and this is what he's saying. Um, Kramer is telling Steinfeld, we used to give them phony contracts, take their land, put them to work on our own, found, on our newfound lands, cut their hair, locks, braids, etc., put them on some overalls, call them niggas, and then we hanged them from, their, from trees. We even took their nationalities. Now, this is what he's telling them. Y'all can go and watch this episode with him talking about the Indian. So remember, the Aborigines, copper-colored native races, 
that was here by the um, that was founded by the Europeans. Now it applies to the descendants of European borns in America. 1828 Webster Dictionary. Jefferson Greenwood, tall and um, commanding the form with a lighter shade of copper color, was the noblest figure of them all. In in nature, um, dignity a match for George Washington himself. Reserve, and he was looked at upon the rest as a leader. Most of the Indians had that pure copper color, with their hair very black and shiny and straight, were long and framed as his uh, features uh, became. But in wrestling, it um, fell, dishuddling over their dark faces and their black eyes shining, who gave them not as little of the wild Indian look. Sometimes they would turn their eyelids the red insides out and um, Quentin chased to us to scare us half out of our silly wits. They playful scalped us in a way we enjoy. Do you remember, um, writes um, Miss Andy um, Cloudwell um, Peskin, it says, now the Indian boys um, used to gather in a circle um, under their big um, elm tree just at twilight and sing the chant by it was regulated their war dance. Um, I can hear now the monotony is repetition. All right, so who are the original natives or indigenous people of America? What's the dictionary team? When you say that says, hey, this is us. All right, black Americans, black indigenous Americans owe one million miles of the weekend of territory. Actually, it's more than that, actually, up to 30 million. And South. Um, Eastern Florida region as well as the colony of California. In all areas of the United States, black nations within the Americas existed before the Thomas arrival. The indigenous people found themselves targeted for enslavement due to the um, papal edicts, the papal edicts of the Catholic Church, in which that state that to enslave all Ham's descendants found on the new um, um, on the newly discovered land of the Americas. If European got the go ahead to enslave all the hands descendants. That would make sense that the Native Americans they enslaved looked like the Africans brought on the ships during the transatlantic slave trade. Hmm. Good. What do you think about Crispus Attucks? Yeah, he, he 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 was a Moor. He's trying to say in uh, the book Black on they were white and they were slaves that. The claim had the claim has been long been made that the first victim of the British in the American Revolution was a black Christmas Attucks. In fact, Attucks was an Indian, a descendant of the John of John Attucks, a Natick who had been battle American pioneers. He's talking about the Nanako. Right, the Nanako, right, which is the right, which well, is the Moors. Called, right, which is the Delaware Moors. The Nanako was called the Delaware Moors. See, that's what. See, he he was dependent on most of us not knowing that. Right, right. Mm. But that's what we were. We were the Delaware Moors, right? See. So the Omex, or the original woolly-haired, dark olive tone people who originally came from Nuba of South and Central Africa, they walked over to America, called the Land of Frogs, um, which changed to Uta, and which became known as Atlan, which became Atlantis, mm -hmm. millions of years ago before the continental drift to set up colonies. All right, the name Omex was given to them by their children, the Aztecs, many years after they migrated to America. The Nubans were called Omex, which means the rubber people, the dwellers of the rubber land um, by the Aztecs because the Omex were the ones who brought rubber to America from their land. It wasn't until four centuries when some of the Chinese descendants of the Churros who came looking for more land called um, Heshu Shen of the Shang Dynasty here in um, America. They bumped into the old mix near California. They lived and mixed in with each other and produced what became known as the so-called Native Americans. I'm going to show you quite a bit of, of those who was further back in Africa. Um, you know, if you get the book uh, When Rocks Cry by um, Horace Butler, um, the book was written by the brother in Texas. We spent 20 years, over $100,000 um, researching and proving that the Bible is speaking of about 23,000 years of achieved documented history that took place in North, Central, and South America, Caribbean islands, and West Africa. Uh, his, his research shows that ancient Jerusalem is in America, that there were 10 tri um, Hebrew tribes 
in the Americas. Moses and the Exodus story took place in the Americas. Ancient Egypt wow. started in the Americas. The, um, the place that Jesus the Christ was born in South America. Um, um, ancient uh, Memphis, Leopolis, and the Great Pyramids of the, and the Egyptians are in the Americas. Sodom and Gomorrah and the land of Moab was in the, uh, was in the America and much, much more. So now, what was, what's the name of that book? That's when rocks cry out. Now, I don't agree with everything that's in his book because I think he was trying to do the Hebrew number um, on the people, which it wasn't necessary because even as he, as I showed you the map just now, it has over 565 names, uh, 484 names in the Americas and 81 names in Canada of villages, towns, cities, mountains, lakes, rivers, and etc. Um, in Arabic, designated um, um, location long before the arrival of um, Columbus. Many of the names were in fact the same names in Islamic places as Medina, as Mecca, um, like Mecca in India, um, in Indiana, um, Medina in Idaho, Medina in New York, Medina in um, Hazen in um, North Dakota, Medina in Ohio, Medina in Texas, Medina in Tennessee, Medina um, in Ava in um, um, Ontario, Muhammad in Illinois, Mona yeah. in Utah, and just a for notable reason, this close examination of the native um, tribes immediately revealed the Arabic etymology and ancestry. You can see that amongst the um, Algonquin and Iroquois people, um, the Askenazi, um, the Apache, the um, Arawak, the um, Arakana, the um, Kavans, the Cherokee, the Creek, um, the Hokokan, um, the Hapa, the, um, the Hapa, the Hopi, the Maka, um, of course, the Mecca, because that's what the word Mecca, all right? The, the Mohicans, the Mohawks, the Nasi, um, the Zuni, the Zulu. Now, check this out. Not only is there a Zulu in South Africa, but there's a Zulu here of the Indian tribe. Hmm. Well, what's part? What's part of United? What's part of America? That I'm up here is that? That's that's up there towards um, Arizona and Colorado, um, everybody. Oh, yeah. what? We dress like them too. You know what I mean? So we got the, the reoccurring names too, but we were almost dressed the same as from people from yeah, the capital. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna show that too. The ancient um, American mound builders. You can see this picture here, and look at the dark features and the dark people that's on this uh, mound. So when they say they don't know who built the mounds, they're goddamn lying because it's in their books. <laughs> <laughs> here it is, right here. <laughs> the ancient American battle mound. And you can see that these are so-called black people right here at the base and all over that damn mound. Right here is another picture. Right from out of Mexico. Showing, you, showing us once again at a funeral. This is once again before, shortly after the arrival of the Europeans. But showing that we was already in these areas. All right, so... Here, our um, ancestors, black folks, or brown folks, as they call us, now bought to sh bought by sh was not bought by ships, all right, per se. Um, not the original ones. You have the original um, Americans um, being here de depicted as the pallbearers carrying a Mexican king or more king on the um, litter um, through a town and set them in at night. The Moors carrying torches and throwing down with the musical. Um, instruments such as drums, horns, trumpets, and with our no address and, and dwellings, and also showing us with flags, possibly foreign. And you can actually see that picture here, all right? The ancient American magazine says an Egyptian presence in B.C. America. This is before Christopher Columbus. And we know that because you go to uh, these 18 temples in the Grand Canyon. Yeah. According to what they never told us in history class, they knew Kim and Kush, the first Americans, was black. Hmm. It's powerful information, man. Powerful, man. Yeah. Right here. I'm talking. Right here, we show you. Yeah, we show you um, the Omex, the statues of the Omex. You look down at the bottom, you see that we still have the phenotypes and structure, facial structures. This is ancient statue from Mexico and Nigeria. Look at the statue from Nigeria and Mexico and look at the similarities between the two. 
It's from the Ancient Presence of Early America by Edward von Sertima, page 96. It looked damn near identical. The Black Gods of Ancient America. This is by Endochemic Kush, what they never told you in history class. He says the black began his career in America, not as slave, but as a master. Mm. He goes on, he yeah. said the identity of the spiritual civilization down to the remotest details in the Sudan and in Mexico. And elsewhere in America leads to the assumption that other cultural elements, identities in both continents and the frequency bearing the same names or of African origin. All right. Now, once again, we just use the term African based on this is what they refer to as. But here, this is the reconstruction of the face of a young woman that they said lived around 11,500 years ago um, near Brazil, southeastern Brazil, and nicknamed Lusa. Right? This is published um, in the Brazilian magazine, 1999, August 1999. So they showed you that the original um, people. Over 11,500 years ago, it was so-called black people. Here are the mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. Right? It was also shown in National Geographic magazine. Is that the same book you read out of, when rocks cry out? No, no, no. This, this is, um, this is, um, this is another information out there. Oh, oh, okay. Here's the skull to the left, and here's the head to the right. This is a this is a sister, melanated sister. Okay. Then they put a cloth on. Then they put a cloth on her head to show you um, that that she was native. Huh. Huh. This is Lucia, a twenty year old African woman who died in South America. So why is she an African American woman in South America? Because they doing the same thing that they did to us, denationalizing. Uh mm huh. -hmm. It just sounds disconnect us away, right. dis disconnect us right. from our, right. our ancestral right. lineage. Right now, now check this out. The European tell us that the that the Olmec civilization just got there five thousand years ago. But check this out. It says that she was what a twenty year old African woman who died in South America over eleven thousand years ago. Check this out. We know that Lucia was a member of the Olmec civilization. Huh? Mm hmm. So that means that you lied. The Omegs go further back than 5,000 years ago then. I mean, 100,000 years. Yeah. Right. Maybe more than that. Exactly. So black is not a nationality. Negro is not a nationality. Color is not a nationality. African is not a nationality. American is not a nationality. African American is not a nationality. Spanish is not a nationality. Hispanic is not a nationality. Latin American is not a nationality. Hebrew is not a nationality. Muslim is not a nationality. Christian is not a nationality. Kemet is not a nationality. Jewish is not a nationality. But not then what is more... So, so even a, Ho a Hawaiian person, Puerto Rican person, you know, like they're just Moors. 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 Guess what happened when I went to Mexico? Oh, okay. Asked the brothers huh? there. I said, "What do you refer to as here, um, to um, to us here in America as? In other words, us in the United States as? Come out, so-called black ones." He said, "Oh, Moreno. Mm. Moreno. More. Moreno. Yeah. He didn't say Negro." Why did he say Negro? Because, because Negro was talking about an object, a thing, yeah. per se, an yeah. object, something, something in which that is dead. He said he ref okay. they refer to it as Moreno. We are Morenos here in America. The Mexicans call us Moreno. But they know we more. Right. Yeah. Now, how in the hell do they know that we are Morenos and we don't know the fuck that we Morenos? <laughs> right. Yeah. Why didn't he say Negro? So, because Spanish supposedly came from Latin. So why didn't he say Negro? Because if you go to the store and you see something <laughs> in Spanish, like, for example, a black computer or a black chair, they would say Negro. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the chair was black or the computer was black. So why didn't he call us that? Because Moreno means brown complected. He referred to it as Moreno. So they knew our history and we don't. And this was in Mexico, in Cancun, when my wife, when my wife and I went in, um, in um, 2007. That's what that's what they told us, that we was Moreno, a woman was Morena, man was Moreno, we are the Moors. 
if we're American, okay, so well, once again, our our nationality precedes America. That's why it's called Moorish American. Already, uh, because more is actually the adjective that describes the noun, which Morris right. American mean like Morris is my phenotype, but American is the, is the continental land that I'm from. Exactly. So it's still all right for us to call ourselves Morris Americans? Well, okay. I would say more American. Okay. So the uh, ish, okay. Yeah, the, ish, yeah. the ish normally gets applied to the fact, even though it relates to nationality, if you look up in Black Law Dictionary or if you look up in um, um, Webster Dictionary, ish means related to um, nationality or like, similar, you know, so you can say Moorish if you use the definition that it applies to um, by what it, you know, by, the, by what it means that is is um, is related to nationality. So Moorish would be related to nationality, but it also means that you're like a Moor or kind you're of. similar to a mm-hmm. Moor. So we I mean, don't want, we don't like that particular terminology because we're not like anything. We are it. Okay, more American, you know more appropriate. So more, right. So more American would be uh, we... be more um, or either just more because even the term just... more in American actually is is the word American is actually has the word more embedded inside of it. Yes, more right. M E R U. Uh, M E R U is a more is more rule more rule means is a more you know and I'll show you that um in the definition um as I keep going on here but this is a book 1493 undiscovering the new world Christopher Columbus created Charles Mann right and look who's on the cover he shows you the original Indians here why he got these so-called black people on the cover as the original as the original Americans. Now remember, they didn't bring the first Negroes over here as they claim until after 1555 by um, yeah. um, Hawkins to 1619. But this is 1492, and look who he have on the cover of his book. <laughs> the real, right? The real exactly. American. What about those that you're not from Africa, you know what I'm saying, 400 years ago, but you have been in America for hundreds and thousands and millions of years? This is what you are, um, that you are the original inhabitants of the Americas. And so here we have a map. Look at the map. Who is this chilling? Look at this map. This is us. Continue on. According to the Jesuits' letters, um, source Africans and Native Americans by Je- um, Jack D. Forbes, the American Negroes are the original Indians. What? <laughs> This is it. This is this is this is from the Jesuit letters. This is from Africans and Native Americans. John D. Forbes says it. The African, the the American Negroes are the original Indians. In layman terms, you don't have Indian in your family. You are the Indian. Now, of course, they're using terminology in which that we don't necessarily apply with, but you get the gist of what they're saying. That the Moors are the original inhabitants of North America. Mm-hmm. The indigenous people. Now look, isn't it interesting that the green area on the um, top map, which is showing the southern eastern tribes, is eerily similar to the blue area on the bottom map? By way, by the way, the bottom map is a 2000 United States census showing where black populations are living today. The southeast native population did not die off. They are living today as African Americans. Huh. Look at the maps. It's almost identical. And they can't hide it no more, you know? Exactly. Yep, the lies are over. Yeah. So these are the Olmec colonists, Colossus, um, description of the black gods who ruled the Americas. They were builders of civilization, not primitive tribesmen running around half naked. Like our commanding ancestors in the ancient Africa, our Olmec ancestors engineered entire cities complex thousands of years before the European crawled out the caves. Historians had nicknamed them the mound builders, and their monolithic, megalithic uh, structures all over the Americas are still standing today. <laughs> right? Point is that our ancestors are already in the Americas and been here for tens of thousands of years. They are called the Amoru. There it is, Amoru. 
Amoru, Amoru, Amoruka. Amoruka. You see, Amoruka, Amoru. It was named after us, not a miracle of Aspusky. When the hell did they ever name um, something after um, the first name of, a, of an individual? The United, they always have George, and is in what? Washington. Which is Washita. Right. And they inhabited the entire region of North, South, and Central America and the Caribbean. They are the real um, American Indians as they were black people. You do not know them by the European gave them um, names like the Mayans, the Incas, the Aztecs, the Toltecs, the Incas, the uh, 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 the Tianos, the Carab, and the Arawak. All these names, all these names, but who's the Moors? So here, my book, First World Order, um, explains all of this in detail. You can get the African presence in early America by Ivan Von Sertima. They came before Columbus, the African presence in ancient America by Ivan Von Sertima. You get the, um, the African presence in ancient America. They came before Columbus by Ivan Von Sertima. You get uh, When the Rocks Cry Out by Harvard's Butler. You get the first Americans with Africans, documented evidence by um, David Ph.D. You get the um, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands by um, Ronald Sanders. You get the Return of the Ancient Ones on the True History Uncovered of the Washington D. Duck Dominion Empire, the Washington Files by the Empress Verdiasi Tierra, Washington Turnica, Gaston L. Bay of the Black Washington Empire. You can get We Are the Washington, the indigenous black inhabitants of North America, the suppressed story of the ancient ones, the original black mound builders, inhabitants of North America, compiled under the instruction of the emperors of the Washington, Rodeocity of Washington, Eternica, um, Gaston L. Bay. Um, here we have Eternica Moor, the Washington mound builders. This is how we look. There's another picture of the Moors from out of Louisiana. You need a good picture? There it is, right there. This is 1688, y'all. Hmm. This is what we wore. You've seen that he had feathers in his cap. But we also had the original kufi from North America, handmade from the basket weaving with um, dry grass, as you see at the yeah. top. And we also wore the original fez from North America, hand basket um, woven with dry um, grass. You also had um, bees in the hair. All right, this is way before 1492. And how we know is because right here, you can see the Princess Washita north of Columbia River. You can see even in the illustration in her left hand, she has her fangs. Uh -huh. mm. For a better look, here it is on top of the head of Empress Delphi um, Kim, who was her ancestor. And who is this? This was the Empress Grandmother, Empress Delphi Kim Washita or Washington Washita. And she served during the turbulence years when the land was um, being given back um, during the Supreme Court case of the um, Turner Ayers versus the United States, 1848. And the Empress Delphi Kim crowned our past um, Empress Verdiasi. Who's Verdiasi? Here she is. Imperial Empire Washita de Dugdemania. Washita Nation of Moors are an indigenous people of North America, the Ashitan or the Ashita, um, otherwise known as the Omex, and have been originally associated with the Washita. Accordingly, the Washita has been the primary group of a more general population of indigenous people classified in history as the Amoru. Who's the Amoru? The Moors. Mm -hmm. She just explained it. That's why I was just telling you the Amoru, Amoruka, Amoruka is named after the Moors. That's why when you find that the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between um, Al Morocco, or the Moroccans, and the United States, that was between us and them. And I'll show you that and we continue later on. Right? Known to the Spanish and the French, the Washington has been, come to be known as the English as the Adenio Wallian, Wallian group identified with the Punic Iberian affinity maintaining a Louisian um, um, Carthaginian heritage. As such, the Washita has been associated with the Eastern Algonquin Native American, having um, acquired an ancient Egyptian as well as Punic script and, and vocabulary as they have appeared in the epigraphics records of the North America. Now, John Selby reports that the Lewis and Clark expedition returned to the ancient ones by the Empress on page 200 states that Choctaw or Choctaw, they are rambling hunting parties to them to be met with all over Louisiana. 
they were at war with the Kaldugis and like and all liked it neither by the red nor the white people. This is um April fifth, eighteen oh five. So if they know if they were not liked by the red and the white people, who was left? It was the black people. <laughs> so the watch tour was so called dark skinned people. All right? And I'm using the word again terminology that they use. So here you don't believe here it is. One example is that the state of Louisiana did not recognize any of its Native American tribes. They were classified as Negroes. There it is. Until um, nearly the t- mid 20th century in Louisiana, you were neither white or black. The Atacapas um, were, um, were many shades of brown. They was not white, therefore they was classified as black. Black Native Americans, excuse me, being Native Americans were not an official option. Official on paper, they did not exist. The sort of treatment was widespread, even though physically present, there was no longer exist, um, existed, except in their own historical records, more um, mostly oral. Their language um, was also fading away as the other classes of culture also eroded. Damn. All right? So, so, so Choctaw and Washita uh, uh, can be used what interchangeably, saying? right? Right. It's what are you saying? What are you saying? Right. That's why oh, you. Okay. That's why you. That's why you achieve, brother L, because you. You straight chalk talk. Yes. You. You come that family line. So here, eyes of eagles. Christopher Porch West. Who is she? She's an Aboriginal Indian of Louisiana, met by the Spaniards in primitive black nations of America. She's descended. Who does she look like? She look like one of our daughters. Yes. Yeah. Big right. time. So here. Right. So here. Louisiana continue to spend um, um, the, um, the spread light, the quest of um, bring truth to light. Empress Radiosi Tierra Gaston, uh, Washington Turnica Gaston L. Bay, you call 30 years of work, including research as an activist in order to become, to, um, become do, to, um, to, in order to locate documents and treaties concerning land known as the Louisiana Purchase, in which that her people are identified as the ancient ones. The Empress uh, said their land was never included in any. Um, land deal, and that it was not part of the Louisiana Purchase, which was sold by Spain to France, nor was it bought in 1803 when France rolled it over to the United States of America. She writes, President Thomas Jefferson was well aware of the fortunate land deal and stated his sentiments at the time. The truth that the land spoken of was never part of the United States um, has always um, belonged to the ancient ones. This sounds like the same man President Abraham Lincoln was given was going to return to the Moors after slavery. He called it the um, Egypt of the West and the Central um, America, the land between the Rockies and the Alleghenies, from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up into Canada on both sides of the Mississippi. In 1848, the Washtar, the Ashtar, and the Turnica, um nations took their land case before the United States Supreme Court and won their case under Judge Cheney. The same judge in 1956 gave his opinion which was not a liberal decision in the tragic Dred Scott case, which basically stated there was nothing that a black man has that a white man is bound to respect. The result of this opinion further um, enslaved uh, and deaf to the Washtar, Turnica, and other nations. They was murdered by the tens of thousands enslaved and ran off the land. Their names was changed to the um, um, to hide the truth. Their names from Washtar to become Washington and Turnica to become Turner. Mm, 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 mm. Right, here's the land known as Louisiana Purchase, as you see, all the way from Florida, all the way up to the, or all the way up along the side of the 13 colonies, all the way on the other side of the Mississippi, all the way up into the almost the whole of Canada. This was in from the books. Here it is a Choctaw, the Treaty of Dark Stand, um, ceded to the United States as part of the territory for the land west of the Arkansas. Um, Georgia finally extended the um, state jurisdiction over the whole of the Choctaw Territory and gave the Indians the right of citizens. Preferring, however, to remove, they succeeded the rest of their land by the Treaty of Dancing Rabbit, Rabbit Creek in 1830 and with the Chickasaw, who had joined them, remo- um, removed west of Arkansas, between the Arkansas and the Canadian rivers of the north and Red River of the south. They succeeded in all 19... Um, million acres and received 20 um, million with 200 um, two, um, with 2,225,000 in money and goods. So these 
of individuals sold us out. Right? So the missionaries of the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions had begun their labor among them in 1818 and were following by the Presbyterians, the Baptists, and the Methodists. All right? So they're saying that the Choctaw, um, a branch of them, well, along with the Chickasaw, which was part of the five so-called civilized tribes, um, sold the land. All right? However, yeah. that is not That's all right. the land which that we're talking about. So here, you're talking about actually 30 million acres of land, over 30 million. So here we have the Mississippi Choctaw, 1908. Maybe you have the Cherokee, North Carolina. We have 100 years later, um, we have um, Martin Luther King saying 100 years later, the Negro finds himself exiled in his own land. He made that statement, and I'll go more into that. Ancient native black nations of America before and after Columbus includes the Washtenaw of the Louisiana Midwest, the Yangtze of the Southeast, the Iroquois, the Cherokee Indians, the Black Free Indians, the Pacwa, and the um, Mohegan of the um, connect, um, which is actually the Mohawk or the Mohicans of the of, um, of, um, um, Connecticut, the Black Californians, um, literally means the Black after the name of the Black Mama Kali, um, the Omex of Mexico, Negro Rentonite of the Panama. The numbers of Black Negro people are mentioned in the works of. Um, Rafiq, Black Nations of America. This is in his book. Um, Atlantis, um, Atlantic Journals and Friends Knowledge, Philadelphia, 1832, page 86, page 121, 186, 187, 194, 209, 208. Uh, um, um, Rafiq was a naturalist who explored and took accurate um, documentation mention of how it works throughout the United States and mentioning Negroes, Blacks, Moors, Ethiopians explored as Parfenit referred to Negro, Black, Africans, um, not dark-skinned Indians. All right, he referred to them as Negroes or Blacks. Or black, all right. All right, in 2010, the um, writer that, um, discovered in his family bloodline was old blood, like many dark-skinned people living in from Memphis, and his family line came from the Mississippi, um, Tennessee, Arkansas region, the historical homeland to hundreds of thousands of dark-skinned indigenous people who the Spanish invaders called Indians or Indios. Unfortunately, because they was dark Indians, the United States quickly unclassified, unlawfully classified them as Negro. According to the United States Department of the Interior agent um, Walter um, Plecker, the Government historian Jack Forbes, the Negro play, um, the Negro today are the descendants of those people called, referred to as the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, um, the Creek, the Yamasee, the Seminole, the Washtaw, the Blackfoot, the Shoshone, the Shoshone, and many other southern and eastern tribes. All right, so I'm going to leave it right there. And so just to show you, you know, um, you know, what's really going on, you know, and um, how we've been placed in this position and now to have to reclaim our nationality. Even though we belong to one of these particular tribes, we chose Washington because if you go to the Camp Holmes Treaty, um, the word Wichita, Washita is one of the largest tribes. They actually called the Wichita Nations, in which that included the um, Osage, the Chickasaw, the Creek, the Cherokee, the Muscogee. Uh, who was the Creek, also um, the Comanche, and different other tribes all band together under the treaty and formed um, the Washita Nations. When many nations come together, it forms an empire. All right, so that's what's going on. All right, so I'm in class right here. Any questions or anything? Loved it, loved it, loved it, Brother Arlene. Yeah, yeah was for yeah. another powerful class, King. I appreciate that. We, we ain't finished. We still got... Shoot, um, like 300 more slides to go. <laughs> 300 more slides. <laughs> <laughs>